Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Physique Development Podcast, a podcast bringing you structured Q&As, deep dives on single topics, inside looks at our team, and more. Today's episode is a deep dive on biofeedback, what it is, and how it can help us make good decisions, whether for ourselves or for our clients. So what you can expect from today's podcast is basically for us to break down what biofeedback is and how we use it as coaches to make informed decisions for our clients uh, throughout their training and nutrition. As always, it is our goal not only to supply you, the listener, with valuable insights on topics or questions, but also to plant some seeds for further research and thought. So without further ado, we'll get into today's topic, which is biofeedback. Okay, so I want to first kind of go over, like we do in most deep dives, just a general overview of, of kind of what the main topic is and kind of what we're looking at here. Um, and this is a very generalized overview, and then we'll get deeper and deeper into exactly what we mean, exactly what we look at as coaches for our clients. Okay, so a general overview is basically biofeedback is the process of basically gaining greater awareness of your physiology as the client, greater awareness of things like current measurements, current macros, how you're currently feeling, the way you're dealing with the, the, the stress of the training, your life, et cetera, right? So these physiological functions basically that you're experiencing, and the more we learn about that from a week to week standpoint, the more we're able to adjust on an individual level, your program to best match that response, that response that you're getting from our current approach. Okay, so again, as coaches, we use this information to keep track of our clients' responses to specific phases, um, types of training, nutrition, nutrition protocols, if you will, cardio protocols, uh, how they're sleeping, how they're handling stress, and how they're putting everything together. Okay, so that's basically a general overview of what biofeedback is, why we're looking at it, and how we kind of start to look at it as coaches here at Physique Development. And I'll hand it over to Sue here, and she's going to dive a little bit deeper into specifically what we look at um, when it comes to the the biofeedback within our check-ins. Yeah. And the reason we're going over this is this was actually a question asked by um, a girl named Hallie. Um, so thank you for asking that question, Hallie. Um, and as we get into this, a big thing within biofeedback is within our check-in documents, we're not just saying, hey, how are you doing this week? Because that's sometimes hard to put into words as how things have gone. And it's hard to break apart your week, especially if you're rushed in the morning, you're trying to get something out and you're like, ah, this week overall was good. Like we're good to go. And it's good Good to have that overall average of your week, but it's also great to dive into these variables. So seeing these variables laid out in front of you are not only going to be great for me as the coach or Alex as the coach or Austin as the coach um, or any of the physique development coaches, but it's also going to be great for you as a client because before I got into fitness, I did not understand these variables, how they related to one another, or that I had to really keep track of all of these. I was just kind of like, uh, uh, did I hit my food? I guess that's something that I was doing. Am I good to go? Sure. Like I was not gauging any of these things. And so now that I am able to reflect on these each week, as I fill out my check-in form and as I read clients check-ins forms, it allows the client to become more reflective, to have a deeper understanding of their body, how things um, interact with one another. And you start to see trends within your body. And then you're able to kind of hack your body and be like, like, hey, I know when my digestion off, the scale is going to be up. I can expect that. And I'm not going in just throwing my arms up wondering like what the crap is going on with my body. So the factors that we look at within our check-ins where we first kind of lay out some different things to make sure that the client and us, our notes match up because I always want to make sure that everything is on par with each client and we're keeping track of that. So we're looking at their current macros, their current cardio, if they're in a dieting phase, if they have any free meals or refeeds in place. Also being able to look at how many weeks they're on a training stimulus and what stimulus they're on. Um, looking at caffeine consumption, 
their uh, weight, looking at any relevant or ongoing issues, being able to see how well they followed the plan the past week, Um, then looking at measurements, looking at any supplements they're taking. And then we have some things that we want them to gauge on a scale of one to 10 of how they're doing. So being able to see your energy during training, energy throughout the day, strength, endurance, digestion, if there's any bloating, change in food choice, how your appetite or hunger levels are, stress levels, sleep quality and quantity, water intake, mentality, emotions. And then we dive into anything out of routine, how you felt, any non-scale victories, and so on. So let's unpack some of that. That was a lot. (laughs) Yes. I I just wanted to get the list out before we unpacked it. I know that that was a lot to be like, is she still talking? I can just see the listener being like, oh my God, oh my God. Like trying to frame (laughs) it right all that So I apologize. I didn't preface. We're going to break each one of those down uh, a little bit further than me just listing them. But I did want to get you the gist of, okay, these are things things that you need to pay attention to when you're looking and are going to be extremely helpful for you to see progress forward, whether you're looking for a coach or that you are coaching yourself or wondering what it looks like for a coaching experience. So Alex, go ahead and dive into that. So people are not (laughs) as overwhelmed as I just made them. Um, The first thing within your your check-in responses is that nothing is is TMI, um, especially within your digestion, uh, the way that your menstrual cycle is affecting you or anything at all, libido, um, all the kind of like um, taboo topics, taboo topics. <laughs> all those things are fair game because those things are going to play a, a role in the adjustments that you make to your, uh, to your training, to your nutrition, um, to your supplementation, all those things. So be very vocal. Um, and, and, and that is a, a reason to uh, trust your coach, be in a, a true like coach to client relationship and build that with them so that you can have that trust and have that open communication because your success is going to, um, greatly or greatly improve with it. Um, so Sue outlined a great detail within our check-in document itself. I think that the, the first thing we can talk on is, is scale weight measurements, uh, current macros and, and current cardio, those pieces being very tangible number based things that we can track from a week to week perspective, month to month perspective that allow us to have things to see if progress is progressing the way that we want it to be, whether that be in a fat loss or a, a muscle gaining phase, if you will. So it's, those are tangible pieces, but I really want to drive home that those are not the only pieces that we are going to utilize to um, see progression. Because if we live and die by measurements and we live and die by the scale, that can be a very crummy place to be uh, where you are trying to to see progress. Um, and there's many other factors to look at as we'll you know, outline throughout this check-in as a whole. Then we'll dig into... Um, how your training and nutrition went, uh, whether that be from an adherence perspective from your nutrition, uh, whether we're looking at something that is like food sourcing or, or things of that nature that you're trying to improve upon. Um, and then within training, how did that go? What was your energy like uh, going into those training sessions? What was your strength like? What was your motivation? Where was your fatigue following the training session? Those different components are going to be very important for us, depending on the type of training stimulus that you're in. Uh, your coach is going to have some um, some expectations of that type of training that will be laid out prior to you getting into it. But we should be, you know, depending on what it is, it may be a higher fatigue, maybe higher inflammatory, uh, response from some of the training or lower fatigue or lower inflammatory response. And those are things that you need to outline, um, with your coach. And if those are things that you're like, I don't really know how to identify with those things, speak up to your coach and those things can, um, have greater detail. Yeah. And so with him talking about that, the way that it's laid out allows us, like I said, to make sure that we're locked in to what's going on. But those expectations we have are based off of, hey, if you're saying like you're you're more tired, but the training stimulus is in fact going to make you more tired, I am going to be like, all right, that's exactly on par with what we want. Vocalize that to the client so they don't feel kind of lost of why am I so tired um, and being able to speak towards that. But let's say we have a training stimulus in place that you shouldn't feel overly exhausted from and you're dragging ass, we need to address that. So being able to see, okay, what stimulus are you in? How long have you been in it? How are you responding to that? And how all of the factors outside of what your training and macros are 
being able to see, all right, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense. We need to change something here. Um, so whether it's changing around their peri workout meal or looking at food sourcing deeper or changing them out of that training stimulus or making sure that the client has an accurate um, idea of what we're expecting from a certain training stimulus or how they need to um take carry that out is all very, very important as we go through this check in process and why we ask so many questions. Correct. And and looking at the kind of the next topic that we would look at is stress. Stress is going to be a huge um, piece of all this and, and stress comes in many different forms, whether that be uh, emotional stress, uh, possibly from relationships, physical stress from uh, work, mental stress from work or um, anything that you have going on. And then you obviously have the physical stress from the training that we're applying uh, within the program periodization and things of that nature. So a lot of different components to look at within stress um, and, and understanding where those uh, pieces are coming from and being very vocal within that is is uh, very important. And just to kind of touch on that as well, uh, basically how we're managing the stress we're putting on our body. That's a, such a large part. So if we could take a, a chunk out of what's already been discussed and talked about here, a, such a big part of biofeedback, such a big part of this check-in process that we have with our clients and, and other coaches have with their clients is everything that we do is a stress in and of itself, right? Our nutrition can be a stress if we're not, you know, if we're in a deficit, that is somewhat of a, that's a stress on our system. If we're training, that's a stress on our system, right? All things stress our system. That is not all stress is bad stress, right? We need stress to adapt and form adaptations to become better in the future, to prepare for more in the future, right? And that's sort of what we're doing this whole training thing for, right? Or, or whatever we're choosing to do. And so how is our body handling that stress? How are we responding? Where are our energy levels? How well are we recovering from that? Um, how is that translating into things, you know, that we're going to discuss further into the scale weight? Um, or things that we've touched on already, like the scale weight, the measurements, things like that. And then getting into the weeds as we're going to get into here with things like digestion and sleep quality and then quantity, energy levels throughout the day and stuff like that. So I just wanted to kind of recap that really quick for those who were maybe frantically writing stuff down <laughs> um, in the beginning part and are trying to sort of wrap their heads around and yeah. catching things up basically. So that's like a really quick recap of where we're at currently in this conversation and Let's move forward from here. Yeah. And I wanted to give an example and kind of talk through. We've said some different things in podcasts, especially about stress and sleep, which those are huge factors that are really important in our check-in. But for example, a client checked in and her weight was up close to two pounds. And if I was just looking at weight and was not asking these other questions, it would either be the thought that maybe she wasn't adherent or that something like we needed to change something. But having these questions in place, I saw that she ate a larger chunk of her food later in the day. She also ate um, closer to bedtime and she ate closer to bed in general, like just eating a bigger meal and it being closer to bed. Um, and then she didn't have a bowel movement the previous day and she was stressed about something. That all makes sense to why the scale weight was up. So it was something that I didn't need to go and change a million things. It was okay. We see that since you ate later in the day, the scale weight was up, but also within stress, let's address the stress instead of addressing why is the scale weight up? Because if you don't look at the full picture, if you don't take that step back, you could start making unnecessary changes to someone's plan because you don't fully understand how to take a step and look at all of the biofeedback. So that's the biggest thing that we want to get across here is if you're not taking this second to really look then you could be doing your client injustice or yourself injustice by not fully understanding what some of these factors play into. So we'll go ahead and dive into a little bit about digestion. Alex, if you want to take that, um, or if there's something else that you would want to touch on first. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get into di to digestion. So with digestion, we spoke about this being a, a kind of a TM TMI topic um, on the front end of this. And uh, within digestion, this is going to have many components uh, to this where uh, outlining any bloating that you're experiencing um, any distension that you're experiencing throughout the day, um, the quality of bowel movements, frequency of bowel movements, um, 
anything in terms of gas or, or belching or anything of that nature is going to be important because all these things, again, are going to uh, be fixable within your supplementation, your nutrition, your training, what have you. Uh, so being very vocal with those things, do not be embarrassed. It, it is all bodily functions. I know that um, maybe maybe some women, I know that myself growing up, I was, was told that women did not uh, poop or fart or anything of that nature. And that is <laughs> just not the case. Once he got married, he realized very quickly that is not the case. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it is all fair game on on that front. And then outlining your your appetite and hunger is going to be important too. If we're in a training stimulus that is uh, potentially very inflammatory or something of that nature, and you're reporting that uh, you're having low hunger all throughout the day, and we know that it's very challenging from a training standpoint, well, that's something that we really need to know and to address we've got something wrong in terms of maybe the intensity that you're taking to the training, or we don't have enough nutrients to facilitate that type of training stimulus or something of that nature. So being very vocal with those hunger signals and where your appetite is at is very important um, throughout the process. Yeah. And with the digestion, it is hard to talk about, especially if it's like a new relationship as far as your coach client relationship. And you're like, do I really tell this person I'm peeing out of my asshole right now? Or do I just say like, everything's okay? That was really aggressive. Well, that's what I'm saying is how aggressive <laughs> are you going to be here? Oh um, but it is extremely, extremely helpful for us to know that. Because if you are actually peeing out of your asshole, something needs to be addressed. That is not normal. And so it's something that if you kind of sit back and are like, I don't know if they're ready for that, or if I should speak on that, and you don't have to say it that aggressively. You could say it differently. Yeah, you could just you say, be like, I'm hey. having some loose <laughs> stools. I'm going yeah. to the bathroom very yeah. frequently. It is very loose stools. You can say it that way. But for the sake of uh, explaining this and saying like, that's important for me to know, because if food is just running straight through you, that's an absorption issue, or it's an issue within some of your food sourcing. And we need to address that because if it is running through you, you're not getting those nutrients and it's going to be very hard to gain or lose weight um, in the way that you want to. Um, and then when we're looking at different things like having constipation in place, that can be something with stress. That can be something with meal timing. That can be something with fiber. That can be something with sleep. It can be a lot of different things. It can be within your training, but we want to address that. And then Alex also touched on earlier sex drive. Um, um, and menstrual cycle not being TMI. And I'm going to touch on these just because I know it might be a little bit easier hearing this from a female. Um, but when it comes to your menstrual cycle, if you're having extreme pain, it is affecting your activities of daily living, your ADLs, then you want to also explain that. And even if it's to a male coach being like, hey, I am incapacitated by these cramps, or I'm having a very heavy flow, or I'm in a lot of pain here, being able to express that so that they're not coaching blind. If you don't express something, whether it's something you've messed up or if it's one of these factors we're talking about, you can't expect a coach to be able to make the best decision on limited information. So it's like someone giving you half of the instructions and telling you to build something and you're not building it correctly. Well, they didn't give you all of the instructions. So it's the same concept here of being able to say, hey, I am having period diarrhea and speak that into what you're talking to be able to get them to understand what's going on. And I know as a female, I was taught that you just kind of, especially with your cycle and digestion, you just kind of brush it off and you don't talk about it, not only because females don't poop, but also because it's something that females are expected within their cycle to just carry on like life is normal. But a lot is going on internally and being able to recognize that and vocalize that is extremely important. And then when it comes to your sex drive, that's going to be another thing that might change how we go about different things here um, because we want to know kind of what that looks like. And I've made the mistake as a coach before of not asking these harder questions, of not diving deeper, and then realizing something later than I should have by not asking these questions. So these are going to help you be a better coach, help you get better results, and help your client be happier as well. Yeah, creating... Creating objectivity to the subjectivity, I think, is very, very important within this, right? So again, to recap, we're not just getting scale weight measurements. Okay, is the scale moving? Yes, check. We're doing everything correctly, right? And, and if we're only asking those questions, we are not 
diving into the bigger picture, right? It, it's really hard for a coach, even an in-person personal trainer, but especially online, we don't get to see you every day. We, we're not, you know, going through sessions with you necessarily. We're not doing these things. We're not, we're not seeing these actions play out. So we can only make adjustments off of what we know, right? So what gets, what gets measured gets managed in a large way, right? If you've heard that quote before. Love that. Yeah. And that's one of those things where if we don't know, we can't do anything about it, right? And this goes back to like simple, basic relationship stuff, right? Like if you're in a, you and your partner, like we can't read minds. And if we're here as that coach client relationship, we absolutely can't read your mind, <laughs> right? In a lot of, in a lot of ways, um, you know, in a lot of a lot of ways, we're just getting to know you as a person. And even if we worked with you for years, there's stuff about you we'll just never know, right? But we do try to get to know you as best we can. And we do realize that we, and I think this is important to address, we do realize that some of these things are quite intimate and personal, right? There is that sort of client-patient confidentiality agreement where none of this stuff is being shared, but we need to know it, right? It's not like this stuff is going to show up like how your bowel movements when is going to show up on our social media feeds, like <laughs> yeah. not the case, right? But we need to know, we need you to be open with us and trust us, right? And that's, in a, that's a trust that we don't take lightly at all, right? And there's a reason we're able to get such great results with our clients and it's because we have this open relationship as far as, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to share this with you and I trust you with this information. We're going to make, we're going to take that information for what it is. We're going to use it to make really, really good decisions that are educated and calculated to actually fuel that result, right? We're going to fix those little things because so many times in a transformation, so many times in a, in a journey that someone goes through, they're doing everything right. And it's not about doing everything right as much as we have to sort of fix. Sometimes there's broken glass along the way and you got to sort of some, you have to have someone trailing you to sort of pick up that, those broken pieces, right? Clean up that trail metaphorically, right? Um, so that, that's a very important thing. So we don't take that relationship lightly we don't take that trust lightly so we we do greatly appreciate that but if if you're not sharing these things with us or your coach like i don't know what to tell you because there's only so much we can work off of if we don't have a bigger picture in mind right so what gets measured gets managed in, in such a large way and there's a reason that we're, we're diving into all these things there's, there's a reason why all these things are so so important yeah and i think that within all of this one thing that physique development really prides itself on is that people come to us and and think in it's like you've got two options you can either enjoy life or you can prioritize your health and it's like it's black and white and it's you can't do both and i think that many 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 clients of ours over the past you know, six years have been able to walk away from working with us and seeing, okay, I can prioritize my health and I can also enjoy life. I can also still have a, a, a great sex life. I can still have all these different pieces and still manage uh, everything and have that balance, if you will. And, and balance is always a, a moving target um, anyway. So coming back to some of the key points within our uh, biofeedback markers. Now, sleep is a huge one. Um, sleep is one that we could you know, really dig into uh, in, in extensive manner. But the main thing that we want to talk about there is the quantity of sleep, the the quality of the sleep as well. So um, room conditions, things of that nature, making sure that all that is in place so that you're having the best quality of sleep. Uh, so vocalizing, maybe if you were, you're waking up throughout the night, if you're needing to use the restroom in the middle of the night, if you're, if you're sweating at all during the night, that would all, all these things would be very, very important for you to touch on. Um, and then any like dreams, nightmares, things of that nature, all these things in, in great detail. And I know that when you get to maybe your single check-in for the week, well, yes, your single check-in for the week, um, that you may forget different things. So what I recommend to clients is just having like a notes tab on your phone, um, just so you can easily, when you're thinking about it, just throw it in the notes tab. And then when you get to your check-in the night before you're checking in, open up that notes tab and be like, oh yeah, I did have a, a, a dream or a nightmare on you know last Tuesday that I completely forgot about. And I can report that in there because it's very easy to forget those little small details uh, each and every week. 
Yeah, and it's um, going on to this, we also ask about mentality and emotions because it's something that we want to make sure that what we're doing, um, I mean, you you see in so many people's transformations where they say it's not just the physical, it's the internal or it's the mental or it's the like the work that went on like in my head is what changed more than anything. And you can see the physical, but you can't see the mental always. And the reason we ask about mentality and emotions is one, it's a good thing to learn about, especially we work with a lot of females. If someone has trends of, okay, I become more emotional the week before my cycle. So not only I can point those out to them, they can realize those and expect those. Um, But it's something like, for example, if a client's mentally having a hard time with body image or a hard time with not going to the gym as often or anything like that, that we're putting in play to help them be more successful in the long term, knowing where their head is at so we can give them a little of what they want and a lot of what they need. So let's say someone's having mentally a hard time, um, like seeing the scale increase. Okay, that's good to know so that I can move around some things that I'm doing so you're not so focused on the scale or maybe I take the scale out of the equation. But that really helps because because the mentality is so, so important. And if your head is in a weird spot, even if my plan is technically perfect, if it doesn't fit for your mentality and what's going to suit you in the long term, that could also be something that I overlook or someone could overlook um, by not touching base on that and not understanding what that looks like. And then we go into some open-ended questions asking about different things within routine. If someone engaged in anything meditative or stress relieving um, or or how active someone was, um, what they're proud of, what they're grateful for. And these are all things mostly for the client to kind of take that second and recognize how fitness fits into their life, what things they did for themselves that week um, and where they can improve. Because if you don't ask that question, so if you did anything stress relieving, didn't used to be on our check-in document because I was just taking the assumption of, oh, I do things stress relieving. Other people probably do that too. But it's being able to, okay, ask point blank, are you doing something stress relieving for yourself each week? No, your stress is high and you're having a bad response to this. That means we really need to implement some things for self-care. So being able to have those are extremely helpful again, because this is personal training. This isn't, hey, just do this training. (laughs) It's a personal training. We want to learn about the person behind who we are training to get you the results that you want and working with each type of person and what's going to push them to get to where they want is what we want to pay attention to. And at the end of the day, um, we are, you know, we are personal trainers, we're strength coaches, we're whatever you want to call us, that we are health coaches at the end of the day. We are, we care about your health. And health extends not only physical, but mental and emotional and that overall well-being as a person, right? And so I know being a, a life coach or a health coach, like there's a lot of, there's a butt end of a lot of jokes or, or poking fun at a lot of different things. But at the end of the day, you have to care for the individual that you're working with. And they've invested in you as much as you've invested in them, um, time and effort and, and your sweat equity and, and everything that's led you to this point as a personal trainer or a strength coach or a health coach or a fitness coach, whatever you're, again, you call yourself. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. It's, it's how you show up for that individual. And I mean, in such a large way here at Physique Development, we care so much about those things because it's not just, it's not just that physical result. Obviously at the end of the day, we want to develop your physique. Our, it's literally rooted in the name of our company. But at the end of the day too, we care about, you know, okay, do we lose 10 pounds, but we're still miserable? We still have a terrible relationship with fitness. We don't. We didn't learn anything more about our health, how we internalize things, how we handle stress, how that carries our, that, how that carries into the gym or affects our nutrition or affects our relationships. Like, you know, at the end of, we're, we're not your overall, we're not your therapist, but we are here for your health and health does, as I said, extend to that physical, that mental and that emotional well-being, right? So, in such a big way we're here for you holistically and obviously we drive that our fuel to a lot of that is through strength training and and activity and and physical fitness but we also are here as that health coach and we're here as that sort of that spine uh that foundation to 
some, being accountable to someone for that because we don't have a lot of people in our lives, uh, I'd say on average, that are asking us those questions, you know? And it's <laughs> like, you, you know, you may have a partner, a close friend that are like, hey man, how are you? You seem pretty stressed, right? But like, if you're going through, going through life, there's a lot of things that we just sort of bottle up and internalize. Um, and, and that has a great effect. And, and as you learn, clients of ours learn, that everything adds up, right? And basically how much can we add to that equation will be dependent on how much you're already dealing with, right? So if we aren't understanding as a coach or you aren't understanding as that trainee or client, how much am I already going through? And how much am I sharing of that to this individual? Because that's going to depend on how much we give you to feel that result, right? So if you're not dealing with much stress at all, you can handle more physically. But if you are a very high stress, high anxious, um, dealing with a lot of emotional distress sort of person, there's still things we can do and implement, but it may be and look different than that to the individual who is adjacent to you, who is much lower stress, right? And, and so in, in such a big way, again, just to recap, we're here for your everything that that sense of health and well-being stands for, not just that physical, but that mental and emotional well-being. Yes, exactly. And if there's anything that you ever rate on these, if you are a client or if you're kind of like, oh man, I didn't know it wasn't normal to have very loose stools all of the time, you can always ask what is considered normal or what does it look like for that? Because um, I've had clients that have just normalized things in their lives that they didn't know weren't normal. So for example, someone who was sweating all through the night and they just didn't think to mention it because they're like, oh, I've always sweat all through the night. So it's not something that's out of the ordinary, but being able to speak on those is extremely beneficial as we talked about just being able to be open there. Yeah. And I, th I think the last thing that I'll touch on is going to, going to be supplementation. So with supplementation, just making sure that you're outlining uh, the brand of product that you're taking, when you're taking it, the quantity that you're taking it, uh, all those things are going to be important in terms of um, assessing your, your training, your nutrition, all those different pieces so that we have that in mind as well. Yeah. So that's basically what we look at for biofeedback. If Austin wants to touch on anything else, I'll open the floor to him in a second here. But um, just giving you an insight of not only how we do check-ins and how we really care for our clients, but also especially for the girl who asked this, Hallie, what biofeedback is and what it means to really dive into it and how that looks within that personal training coach-client relationship. Absolutely. Nothing to add here. I just want to say thank you to everyone who listened. Um, if you guys did frantically take notes that look like chicken scratch that then went back and hopefully had an eraser to redo them or more pieces of paper. Um, thank you guys sincerely though, for listening, all jokes aside. Um, we really enjoy this podcast and we really enjoy that people actually listen to it. So thank you to that person who is on the other side of the speaker right now. Um, and yeah, nothing else to add. Uh, come back next week or two weeks from now. And uh, we'll have more for you.